All right, so yesterday we had a surprise January 6th committee hearing involving a top aide to White House Chief of Staff Mark Meadows, who was arguably the second most powerful person in the White House outside of Donald Trump himself. And uh, from this witness's testimony, we got some pretty explosive uh, allegations here. So here from Common Dreams, Brett Wilkins, we got a great breakdown. He says, bombshell after bombshell dropped as January 6th testimony homes in on Trump guilt. And he says, democracy defenders responded to Tuesday's testimony by a former Trump administration aide before the January 6th committee by demanding that the former president and his co-conspirators be held to account in the face of increasingly incriminating evidence of their culpability for the 2021 insurrection. And listen, I'm just going to say this up front. Uh, I don't really understand what the fuck the point of these hearings is if you're not going to bring uh, criminal charges against Donald Trump and the rest of his lackeys. I mean, you're basically at that point, if you don't bring charges, uh, just saying that it's okay what they did and you're emboldening them, you're encouraging them to do it again. Uh, which is exactly what they are going to try to do. So you definitely have to have some sort of charges that are filed uh, in a response to uh, all of the evidence that we have gotten, uh, exactly, you know, indicating the role that Donald Trump, the rest of his uh, uh, cabinet, and, uh, you know, the, uh, the role that they played with the Proud Boys, the role that they played in uh, encouraging and facilitating this and making sure that it happened the way that it did. But nonetheless, they continue here saying Cassidy Hutchinson, who was the witness who served as a special assistant to Mark Meadows, former President Donald Trump's last chief of staff, revealed what the consumer advocacy group Public Citizen described as bombshell after bombshell during her in-person testimony to members of the House Select Committee to investigate uh, January 6th. So here are the basic uh, outlines of some of the main things uh, that we found out during this testimony. So they say, among other things, Hutchinson testified that, uh, number one, Trump knew that heavily armed supporters were in Washington, D.C. to attend his Stop the Steal rally that preceded the January 6th attack and was infuriated that Secret Service agents were trying to bar them from the event. So what they're referencing here with the bar them from the event is basically this, you know, other piece of this same testimony that we got that essentially you had Trump giving his speech uh, in front of the Capitol before they were going to go march to the steps of the Capitol, and he was basically embarrassed about the size of the crowd while he was giving his speech and he uh, asked the Secret Service he's like what's going on what's the hold up here and basically they were saying that they had uh, metal detectors to you know block people who were bringing in weapons guns knives etc uh, into the area that Donald Trump was giving his speech and this was his response he turned around and he said they're not here to hurt me so kind of implying that he knew that they were potentially there to hurt somebody just not him and so he was perfectly ready and willing to have uh, a bunch of armed supporters of his uh, follow up to his speech to then go and march at the Capitol after that. And uh, not only was he willing to have his armed supporters there to do his business, but apparently he was also trying to go and march uh, to the Capitol alongside them. And that kind of leads into the uh, second point here. So they say when Secret Service agents told Trump that they would not take him to the Capitol, he became physically aggressive with one of them, telling him, I'm the fucking president and then grabbing the steering wheel of the presidential limousine, okay? So according to this testimony, and granted, uh, this is in dispute, we're gonna get to that here in a second, but according to this testimony, okay, assuming that this story is accurate, you have the president of the United States whose Secret Service agents were telling him, we don't have the security, we don't have the resources to be able to take you to the Capitol right now. There's kind of sort of an ongoing insurrection with your armed supporters, so we can't bring you there. And he apparently literally tried to hijack the vehicle and apparently also lunged at the neck of one of these Secret Service agents. So, I mean, listen, this is just fucking crazy. You have the President of the United States trying to hijack a car, the presidential limousine, to then what? Go drive to the Capitol building to be alongside his supporters and go into the Capitol building to stop the certification of the election that he lost? I mean, pretty much as face value as you could possibly ask for in terms of a president trying to facilitate a open and brazen coup attempt. I don't know how you could possibly have any other interpretation other than that. But again, on this specific story uh, related to what happened within the car that they're talking about here in the Secret Service agent. Uh, there has been apparently some pushback. So here from The Guardian, they say Secret Service agents reportedly willing to testify that Trump did not lunge at him. So, you know, if you're willing to testify, then have them come testify. Let's find out exactly what happened. Uh, I don't think that this would necessarily mean that this witness uh, was lying under oath because with this specific story relating to the limousine and the hijacking of it, uh, she was just reporting what somebody else told her happened in the car. So she wasn't there 
having a firsthand experience. But uh, nonetheless, whichever way this is going to go out, you know, I don't think that this is the biggest detail of all of the different things that we learned yesterday. I think it's uh, much more important to uh, recognize that the president, whether or not he lunged at the Secret Service agent's neck, uh, was trying to go to the fucking Capitol in order to do an in-person armed insurrection uh, in order to uh, overthrow the uh, or to stop the uh, counting of the electoral votes. So it seems like it's kind of a, a little bit of nitpicking there going on, but we move on to the third one now. They say, despite pleas from top aides, including White House counsel Pat Cipollone's uh, warning that people are going to die and blood is going to be on your fucking hands, uh, Trump refused to act as the Capitol was overrun. And he, you know, he was really gleeful about it. I mean, if you want to go back, if it was not for all of the dozens and dozens of people around him, even Fox News uh, hosts like Sean Hannity, who were telling him to get shit under control, to go out there, tell his supporters to, uh, you know, go home and shit like that. If it wasn't for that, he definitely would have just kept encouraging this. I mean, let's be real about it. But, you know, here you have the uh, president of the United States uh, actively being told while this insurrection is happening, even before the insurrection was happening, uh, being told that there is going to be violence, that they are armed. Uh, and even in the case of uh, some of the chants that we heard surrounding uh, Mike Pence and, and supporters who were out there saying to hang him, Trump even thought that he deserved that and that he was perfectly OK with those types of chants. So, you know, I mean, listen, just a completely fucking deranged and insane situation. But uh, this is the United States right here for you. So uh, finally, we finish off here with another one saying that Meadows and attorney Rudy Giuliani uh, sought, uh, sought preemptive presidential pardons along with a whole host of a bunch of other uh, members of Congress like uh, uh, Matt Gates and a bunch of other schools in that same vein as him. But Nonetheless, you have uh, Rudy Giuliani also seeking a preemptive presidential pardon for their role in Trump's effort to overturn the 2020 election. So listen, I mean, that's pretty much as much of a you know surface level admission of guilt as you could possibly ask for. If you're going and preemptively asking for a pardon, I think the words that uh, Matt Gates used was a uh, you know total encompassing pardon. So he wanted a pardon for literally like all crimes relating to him. So, you know, I mean, you want to go down and, you know, get into the details of this. I mean, it, that pretty much alone says that they knew at least that they were committing crimes. Uh, at the very least, and that they could potentially be brought up on charges. So, you know, here we have basically a, a series of events where we know based on all of the testimony, all of the details that we've gotten behind the scenes that Trump knew there was going to be violence. He encouraged the violence. He encouraged people to go march on the Capitol. He knew that his supporters were armed. Uh, he knew that it was, you know, an active situation, an active uh, insurrection situation that was going on. And he was, uh, you know, actively behind the scenes saying that uh, Mike Pence deserved the chance that he should be hung. He wanted to go in person while the insurrection was happening. Uh, apparently Apparently, maybe, maybe not, uh, tried to hijack a Secret Service vehicle in order to go to the Capitol with his supporters. So just a completely insane series of events that we have here. And there are so many different angles that you could go with if you wanted to charge these people with a whole bu bunch of different crimes that they are obviously complicit in. But, you know, that comes down to the, uh, the question at the end of the day is whether or not they are actually going to be filing charges or whether or not they're just going to try to use this, I guess, as a uh, political issue in the elections. But Finally, they finish off here with a quote uh, saying Trump and his chief of staff, Mark Meadows, were warned repeatedly of the anticipated violence on January 6 and yet did nothing. Common cause President Karen Hobart Flynn said in response to her testimony, and they were informed of semi-automatic rifles and pistols, AR-15s and Glocks being carried by members of the audience on the ellipse hours before his speech. And yet Trump incited the crowd and called on his heavily, heavily armed audience members to march to the Capitol and fight like hell. So again, it's pretty fucking transparent. Transparent. I don't know how you could possibly uh, look at all of the different shit that we've seen and come to any other conclusion that uh, Donald Trump and his lackeys should be charged criminally, uh, criminally as soon as possible for all of this different shit. But on top of all of that other testimony that we got, we also had this that dropped, which apparently these are like questions that they have been asking some of their witnesses, specifically more like uh, formerly pro-Trump witnesses, like even the one that we just heard from uh, Hutchinson. She formerly worked for uh, Ted Cruz. She worked for Mark Meadows. She was obviously a MAGA Republican. So, you know, it's not something that I, somebody that I have any ounce of respect for in terms of her personal politics. But uh, on top of that, they've also been asking other witnesses who have been pro-Trump witnesses in the past or pro-Trump uh, figures in the past and uh, ask them whether or not they have been getting contacted by either Donald Trump directly or people who work in his circles. And uh, we had some reports of basically just straight up mafia style uh, threats that were that were coming down uh, from the January 6th committee. So this is also something that they reported yesterday. They say, we commonly ask witnesses connected 
connected to Trump, whether they have been contacted by anyone attempting to impact testimony. And they say, here are some of the examples that they have received to this question. So the first one said, the first one says, what they said to me is, as long as I continue to be a team player, they know that I'm on the team, I'm doing the right thing, I'm protecting who I need to protect. You know, I'll continue to stay in good graces in Trump world. And they have reminded me a couple of times that Trump does read the transcripts. And just to keep that in mind, as I proceeded through my depositions and interviews with the committee, and another one said, a person let me know that you have uh, your de deposition tomorrow. He wants me to let you know that he's thinking about you, Donald Trump. Uh, he's He knows you're loyal and you're going to do the right thing when you go in for your deposition. I mean, again, just straight up mafia shit here. They're literally sending them texts or emails or wherever the fuck they got this and uh, literally just being like, listen, I mean, you know, Donald Trump, he's going to be watching you. He's going to be, you know, looking at your testimony. I hope you wouldn't do anything that would compromise our relationship and, uh, you know, our opinions on you. I mean, just come on. This is full-on mafia, uh, mafia boss shit that we're seeing right here on full display. So again, what it comes down to at the end of the day is uh, exactly what uh, Pramila Jayapal was pointing out here. She says Trump incited the mob. He knew that they were armed. He wanted to get rid of the uh, mag needle meters. I don't know why the fuck they're calling them this. Just call them metal detectors or whatever. Make it simple. Uh, getting rid of the mag needle meters because he wanted them to carry their weapons into the Capitol. He wanted to go to the Capitol with them to overrun or to overturn the election. He attempted a coup. Jail him now. What an outrage. And she's 100% correct. I mean, listen, again, if you're going to be complete cowards about this, if you're not willing to actually prosecute the most powerful people in the country uh, for brazen crimes and in this case literally the crime of trying to overturn a uh, democratic election here in the United States effectively bringing about an end to even the facade of democracy the pretend democracy that we have here left uh, in the country I mean you have to prosecute them if you don't you're just encouraging them to continue this and uh, to do it again in the future which you know if they don't prosecute them is exactly what the fuck is going to happen